few months ago, I flew to Texas to visit GR Research, a company that specializes in DIY kits and claims to upgrade speakers from other brands. I already did a full factory tour where I let the founder of GR Research, Danny Ritchie, to talk his points of view without any interruptions or opinions of my own. And you can find that video in the link description below this video, in the description box, as well as the pinned comment section. But many of you asked what I thought, my opinions of my time there, and how his reference system sounded. So here's what I found out with no filter. Number one, upon visiting GR Research, I found that the company was bigger than I imagined. But also, they had many unfinished projects to expand their business, which is exciting. For example, they are planning to set up a new listening room. While I've personally visited bigger companies myself with more impressive prof professional facilities such as Paradigm that you will eventually soon see on this channel, the GR Research facility was no slouch and felt like a more intimate, family-owned business with a very enthusiastic and professional team behind it. Number two, now you may know that Danny claims to upgrade many speakers from other speaker brands and he publicly roasts most of these companies on his channel which actually built a good following around that concept. So what does he do in these upgrades exactly? Well, he uses an older Clio measuring system to measure the initial response of the speakers then tries to flatten out the frequency response as much as he can with a new crossover using higher quality parts and of course, the famous no res and tube connectors. He does this because he believes neutrality is what allows users to hear music as the artist intended. Now, anytime there is a measurement involved, many wonder how accurate or correct the measurement rig is. I personally don't care how he does his measurements, but I was curious about why he does the measurements the way he does. And Danny's response to my question was basically that he has done this a long time, knows what he is doing, and this is the process he is comfortable with. Fair. But when I sent over the measurements he provided me with the Exos Encores to some industry experts who have inadequate chambers and are well adversed in the tools and methods of measuring and testing speakers, their response was unanimously, you can't accurately design a speaker using those measurements. The reason mainly came down to the fact that Danny uses something called a gated measurement that does not measure anything below 200 Hertz. Now, to be fair, this can be easily corrected by doing a close field measurement of the woofers and essentially stitching up the frequency response, which is exactly what some professionals like John Atkinson from Stereophile does. Now, again, to be extremely fair to Danny, when I asked him why he doesn't do that, he replied that he knows the drivers he is working with very well and has done this enough times to where he can essentially guess or predict how the bass will roll off. And the general theme I got here was that he likes to use and recommend his customers to use his open baffle servo subs anyways for the bass so he can concentrate more on the mid-range and high frequency measurements. Now, naturally, my number one request from my viewers was for me to A-B test before and after an upgrade. Unfortunately, that was not possible because of the process of how these upgrades are done. So let me quickly run you through the process. First, Danny receives only one speaker, not a pair, from the customer that requests the upgrade. And so there isn't much of listening tests actually done, at least in stereo, at the very least. Now, to be fair, Danny says one speaker is all he needs to build a new crossover and upgrades because he has done this for years and knows what he is exactly doing. Fair enough. But on the other hand, I clearly remember that he criticized Amir from Audio Science Reviews for testing one, only one speaker and not a pair in his review of one of the GR Research speaker kits. And where Danny said, in quote, they play only one speaker, but they never listen to a pair, which is crazy to me. That's all they do over there is they just, they'll do a bunch of tests and they'll play one speaker and they'll say something about it, but they never listen to a pair, which is, to me, it's crazy. Now, if you didn't already get the reasoning behind why I wasn't able to hear the before and after an upgrade in any meaningful way, it is because they don't have a pair for me to listen to because they only have one speaker in for these upgrades at all times. And what actually baffled my mind even more is that it takes Danny only maybe 20, 30 minutes to come up with these upgrades 
that some of these brands spend hundreds and thousands of hours on R&D. Now, to be entirely fair, Danny clearly and rightfully spends more time building and planning out their own DIY kit products and admits that the ultimate goal for these upgrades for other speaker brands, for customers, is to eventually get the customers to purchase their own speaker kits. And I'm sure he truly believes he is making some of these other brand speakers better and calls them an upgrade. But honestly, I personally don't see it as an upgrade, more like a modification. But if you bought a modification kit from Danny and you're satisfied with it, who am I to say that it's an upgrade or not? Again, this video is just about my opinions. Now, I apologize if you are Danny's fan and took offense to any of my points, but I think they were more than fair. I've made videos where it was clearly positive and fun, but there are both positives and negatives to any company and there would be no point in me going to Texas if it wasn't to give you more insight into both the positives and the negatives of the company from my point of view. I've specifically talked about my thoughts on the upgrades because people are asking me questions about the upgrades and what I think about them more than the actual DIY kits from GR Research. I have no intentions of starting a drama and all the points I have stated in this video are points and questions I brought up to Danny in person. I only report what I saw and heard because it was requested multiple times and that's my job. Also, kudos to Danny as he said that this is exactly all he wants for me to report what I saw and heard. And talking about what I saw and heard, here's number three. I've heard Danny's reference system as well as many of his other speakers for hours during my few days in Texas. Call it a binge listening session. First of all, the flagship NX Stream speakers were simply sublime. The amount of detail and resolution from these speakers were goosebump worthy. It was the highlight of the show for me because the highs were extended, airy, and spacious. Overall, sound was little towards the bright side of neutral for the highs, but it wasn't fatiguing to me at all. With the music we played, and we played some recordings that sounded bright and fatiguing to me in the past with other speakers. I've said bass is controlled on other speakers before, but I think this is the first time where the word controlled comes to mind when listening to a high frequency of a loudspeaker. The mid-range was nicely balanced with a hint of warmth to flesh out the instruments, but if I am being honest, I honestly wanted a little more flesh and warmth to what I was listening to, but that's just personal preference. For me, I would say the mid-range was a tad bit leaner than I usually like it, but the vocals and instruments had really nice layering, sound staging, and imaging. It would be an understatement to say that the speakers were really far out into the room, and that certainly played a role in creating such a nice soundstage for sure, but what I heard was really impressive. However, I had mixed feelings about the bass on the speakers. The bass was nice and linear, but we were using two open baffle servo subs. Without the servo subs, it still had the good characteristics I described, but I honestly didn't enjoy the speakers as much as it sounded leaner than before, and I could definitely tell the speaker needed subs to sound full. This was true for all the speakers played at GR Research and not just the NX Dreams. Now with the servo subs, I have to say this would be my choice to go to for music if I want a linear extended bass that loads the room in a different way than traditional box designs do. Let me explain. Open baffle servo subs doesn't seem to pressurize the room and give you a chest pounding bass like some box speakers or boxed um, subwoofers do. So it is a no go for me if I'm going to be setting up a home theater because I want that chest pounding pressurization in my room. But for music, I found it subtle, nuanced, and very pleasing even though I do think I missed the chest pounding bass out of the box alternatives. Needless to say though, I highly recommend these subwoofers and speakers for music from what I've heard. Now, before we move on to other speakers I've heard, I will say we heard two different amplifiers. One was a prototype class D amplifier GR Research is working on, and the other was the tube amplifier from Dodd Audio. We used a tube preamplifier from Dodd Audio as well. I liked the class D amplifier quite a bit, but I definitely preferred the tube amplifier for myself. I've also heard the NX Studio with a pimped out crossover which this genius built. I think they were not at the same level as the NX Dreams in terms of scale, but it still had the same detail, brilliance, and nuance without the fatigue. 
Overall, if you can imagine a less bigger sounding and extreme, that is, that is exactly what these were and would be more suited for smaller spaces. Again, I heard it without the subs and wasn't fully satisfied with the bass and overall fullness of the sound. I would definitely recommend subs with the, any of the GR Research speakers if you want a fuller and a richer presentation. Now, I won't comment on the Anexotica because I have not heard one as they didn't have a demo pair, but I was told that they are more or less similar to the NX Dreams, but in a less intimidating price point and build time slash effort. Because remember that these are all kits and you have to build it yourself. Although some are available in finished versions now on their website. Now, moving away from the NX series that uses planar magnetic tweeters and our open baffle designs, we have the LGK and the X series. Now, in the X series, I heard the Exilus Encores that I already reviewed, so I won't go into it in this video. Instead, I'll link my review in the description box below this video. In the LGK lineup, I heard the LGK 2.1. I think this was my personal favorite for the money, even compared to the Exilus Encores. Both the LGK and the X3 speakers I've heard are more laid back in the higher frequencies than the NX models, but still with air and sense of space. I found it more my sound as the sound was neutral with a nice amount of warmth in the mid range, and it just sounded more musical to me. LGK 2.1 especially sounded very coherent and imaging was spot on. And with the speakers far out into the room, all the speakers I heard, including the budget LGK lineup, all had massive sound stage. Now keep in mind that we were using servo subs with all these speakers, but I think the LGK 2.1 was the only one where I was still satisfied without the subs turned on. And it wasn't because it had more bass than the other speakers, but because it still sounded fleshed out and warm without the subs. Honestly, if I wanted to buy something for myself from what I heard, it was the NX Dreams and the LGK 2.1 with the servo subs, two of them. Lastly, many viewers are asking me if I'm going to review more GR Research speakers that come out in the future. And my answer to that is, it is up to GR Research. I am always happy to review and cover their products. So that's pretty much it from me and thank you for tuning in to hear my opinion. I encourage you to check out my other videos I did while I was at GR Research. And I wish you found all the videos I posted about GR Research informative, entertaining, and if it was, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for future videos about audio just like this. Until next time.